She woke up screaming. That's what I remember the most. That's what broke my heart. That's what forced me to go on the journey that changed everything in my life and the life of thousands of men and women around the world who learned what I'm about to teach you right now. The moment my beautiful, badass wife, Tara, a woman who could take down a perp twice her size with nothing but a nightstick, who was the meanest power forward on her college basketball team, and who could shut up anyone stupid enough to give her lip with nothing but her cop stare, woke up in a cold sweat, her jaw clenched so tight I thought she would break her teeth. And then she screamed so loud, I heard ringing in my ear like I was at a heavy metal concert. What happened next is what tore my world apart. What almost destroyed our marriage. What almost led my beautiful, amazing, tough wife to do the unthinkable and take her own life. But even though it was the worst moment of my life when it happened, and led to the biggest test I have ever personally faced, I actually find myself grateful it happened, and in a weird way, you will too, because it led to a strange scientific discovery that has saved the lives of tens of thousands of men and women around the world. A strange scientific discovery that healed my wife's broken body when every doctor and expensive specialist had shaken their heads at us and told us to give up. A secret that caused her belly fat to flatten almost overnight without giving up any of her favorite foods and even though her injuries kept her from doing any exercise more strenuous than walking from the bed to the couch. A secret that brought back our love life after we thought that part of our marriage was completely dead. A secret that saved my brother from his type 2 diabetes and gave him back the ability to enjoy his life for the first time in over a decade. A secret that, if you just listen closely over the next six minutes, learn the shocking truth and do exactly what I say, could turn back the clock on your body and your metabolism so you burn fat like a teenager again. You'll wake up every morning bursting with energy. Feel sharp and bright-eyed like your mind is on fire with ideas. We'll have you looking and feeling younger than people 20 or 30 years younger than you, while experiencing what it's like to be truly thin and healthy for the first time in your life all by using the strange scientific secret to do one little thing three times a day that almost automatically forces your body to lose weight. Even if you're 40, 50, or even 200 pounds overweight. In fact, it works better if you're at least 10 pounds overweight. Even if you simply don't have the time to exercise or simply don't like exercise, this strange scientific secret doesn't involve doing anything more difficult than visiting your grocery store. Even if you feel like you simply can't give up your favorite sweets and comfort foods and have failed at diet after diet before, which was definitely not your fault. No matter what, if you just follow this secret, you too can experience what it's like to look in the mirror and be proud of what you look like, to never have to worry about your weight again, to know with absolute certainty that you've done everything possible to live a long and healthy life. Oh, and by the way, whatever you're thinking the secret is right now, I promise you, you're wrong. Because the strange secret we discovered that's helping not only my wife, but thousands of men and women around the world shed pounds like a snake shedding its unwanted skin roll back much of the damage caused by diabetes and heart disease. And finally, make this losing weight and staying healthy thing make sense and be as easy as it's supposed to be. It took my wife and I going through a personal hell that so easily could have broken us, but that has brought us closer together than ever. Even though that thought seemed absolutely impossible just a few short years ago. Tara, babe, baby, wake up, I said. You're okay, you're okay. But she wasn't listening. She was there again. Back in her squad car, watching a telephone pole rush toward her like a speeding train, bracing for impact, reliving the moment that ruined our lives, the moment that her body became her enemy, the moment I started to lose her. Don't touch me. I'm fat and disgusting, and I'm always going to be fat and disgusting. I don't want you to touch me, she yelled when I reached out to hold her, to kiss her, to show her how much I loved her no matter what she looked like. Suddenly, I felt a terrible wave of shame rush over me. She was my wife, the woman I promised to protect and take care of. And seeing her laying there in agonizing pain and frustration... I felt powerless and weak and useless in a way that I never thought possible. It took over an hour for her to calm down enough to go back to sleep. An hour of tears and self-loathing and hopelessness and grabbing hold of the belly fat she hated so much. Tara had been an athlete her whole life. It was one of the things that made me fall in love with her. How physical and fearless and fit she was with a body that made her look more like a model than a cop. But since the accident, since the broken bones and the battered spine and the constant, terrible, crippling back pain took away every sort of activity she loved so much, everything had changed. It had been years since the crash. Years of watching the woman I love struggle and suffer and give up hope. Years of watching her sink deeper and deeper into despair as she kept gaining weight no matter how hard she tried not to. Years of feeling so helpless as my happy, healthy wife became someone else. Someone I didn't recognize. Someone I'm not even sure wanted to keep living. And now, in her 40s, it's like the battle was lost. The weight just kept coming until she had 196 on her 511 frame. And the woman who used to face every challenge with a smile seemed to have given up. You have to lose weight, Tara, the doctor had said in a patronizing voice like he was explaining why being overweight was bad to a five-year-old. Like she didn't already know. 
dangerously close to type 2 diabetes, she said with a cynical laugh on the ride home, taking the news as just one more brick in the wall of self-loathing she'd built around herself. One more piece of evidence that her life was over. Just a few days earlier, she'd been talking to our daughter about the perfect high school graduation day. Now she was joking about not even living to see it, even though it was two years away. That night, I lay awake for hours next to Tara, staring at the ceiling and feeling my heart constrict in my chest, imagining life without my wife. Was she right? Was this it? Was this what our life was supposed to be now? I couldn't remember the last time we'd really kissed, never mind made love. I remembered what her laugh sounded like, and I felt like I was going to cry, realizing I hadn't heard it in years. Did I really have to watch her suffer like this? I tossed and turned all night, thinking of our beautiful daughter finishing high school without a mom. But what could we do about it? We'd tried everything over the years. Everything you can do to lose weight that doesn't involve strenuous exercise. Low carb, low fat, paleo, calorie counting, not to mention all the fancy diets like Dr. Bernstein, Atkins, Weight Watchers, Herbal Magic, Jenny Craig. We spent thousands of dollars we couldn't afford on the salary of two cops and nothing worked. No matter how hard we tried, no matter how much money we wasted, no matter how many nutritionists and specialists we saw, nothing worked. In fact, after every single miracle diet, she ended up weighing more than when she started. These extreme diets were putting her body into shock mode, causing her to have uncontrollable cravings that had her raiding the fridge in the middle of the night and sneaking bags of Hershey Kisses. And as the years went by, it just got worse and worse. She got bigger and bigger and sadder and sadder, and our marriage became less about love and more about seeing how long we could go without a fight. Lying there, feeling my wife's warm body curled up against me, I knew I could do one of three things. One, I could ignore the thoughts and the fear swirling in my mind. I could watch what was left of the woman Terry used to be fade to be replaced by a shadow with her face. I could watch our marriage crumble to nothing as we headed for the divorce I knew was in our future if we didn't do something. Two, I could get mad and bitter, rage about how unfair it was to have so much taken from us when we had both dedicated our lives to serving and protecting others and go on antidepressants just to get me through the day. Or I could make the choice I did, the choice to fight for my wife and our family. The choice to discover the truth about the real cause of weight gain and how to stay lean and fit in your 40s, 50s, and beyond, even if you can't or just don't want to exercise. The choice to wake up every morning knowing I had done everything in my power to help the woman I still loved so much live a life as free of pain and as healthy as humanly possible. It was two weeks later that the solution literally hit me in the face, and it was one of the most painful experiences of my life. I was working SWAT at the time, rushing to the most dangerous situations in the city, putting my life on the line each and every day. An armed suspect was holding hostages at the top floor of a 20-story building. My job was to lead a team as we repelled down the side of the building in full gear and hit the guy before he knew what was happening. Well, you know what they say. No plan survives contact with the enemy. We waited for the signal and then repelled just over the side of the building, our lives literally hanging from one single repel line. We broke the top three windows with a crash and tossed three OC pepper spray grenades to subdue everyone inside and placed another grenade on the deck so the suspect wouldn't come running out and try to escape, or worse yet, throw one of the hostages out, possibly killing him. Just as we were about to enter the building, a massive gust of wind blew a cloud of pepper spray right back in our faces. We were coughing, sniffling, embarrassed, and could barely see. But as professionals, we still got in there and did our job. If you've ever been hit by pepper spray before, it's not a pleasant experience. For the rest of the day, I was coughing and sneezing. Tears were streaming down my face. I felt like my body was on fire inside. I could practically feel the heat radiating off me like a furnace. I felt like I'd just done an intense CrossFit workout and run a half marathon, even though I was just sitting on my couch recovering. And that's when it hit me. I already knew that oleoresin capsaicin, the OC used in pepper spray grenades, could rapidly raise your body temperature. But was it possible that it could actually burn away my wife's belly fat without exercise? Could accidentally getting hit with pepper spray actually be the answer I'd been looking for? It sounded weird, even a little bit dangerous. But then I found an article in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition that flat out proved my weird idea was actually 100% true. See, in 2012, researchers from the Hokkaido University Graduate School of Medicine ran a weird experiment. First, they put 18 healthy men aged 20 to 32 through two hours of cold exposure. Nothing extreme. They sat in a room with a thermostat at 66 degrees Fahrenheit, just cold enough to make the experiment work. You see, cold exposure is a well-known way to dramatically increase energy expenditure through the activation of something called brown adipose tissue. Then later, the researchers simply fed the same men 9 milligrams of capsinoids. After both treatments, they measured the men's skin temperature and energy expenditure for two hours in a single, blind, randomized, placebo-controlled crossover design. What did they discover? That when the men were given the capsinoids, as opposed to a placebo, it increased energy expenditure and activation of brown adipose tissue just as much as after the cold exposure. In other words, the capsaicin alone raised the inner thermostat for men, turning their bodies into a veritable fat-burning furnace. But that wasn't all. I also learned how capsaicin could actually transform useless and dangerous white fat into high-octane brown fat that actually burns your ugly white fat for energy, meaning you can actually use your unwanted white fat as fuel instead of burning sugar like most folks do, and that makes it almost impossible to get and stay thin. 
I don't want to get too scientific here, but the easiest way to picture the way brown fat works is to picture a car with the engine revving and the clutch pedal pushed all the way to the floor. Brown fat uncouples the calorie burning of fat and sugar through the actions of a class of regulating proteins called uncoupling proteins. When the brown fat mitochondria are uncoupled, it's like revving your engine all the way into the red without letting the car go into gear. All of a sudden, you're burning a ton of fat without moving a muscle, losing weight while sitting on your butt and watching TV. That was the good news.